Hello everyone, my name is Siddharth Saktidharan and I am a member of the Hardware Product Management team at F5. Welcome to the third video in the series introducing our series, F5's next generation appliance based solution. To recap, in the first video, we introduced the R series platforms and the F5 OSA software that runs on the R series platforms. We were able to use the appliance setup wizard to configure management IPv4 addresses and also set DNS and NTP server settings on the R series appliances. In the second video, we were able to license a R series appliance, configure network and system settings at the F5 OS A layer, create backup and export our backup configuration. And finally, upgrade the version of F5 OS A software to run the latest 1.3.1 version. In today's video, we'll go over choosing TMOS tenant sizes and types, and finally deploy a TMOS tenant on our R series appliance. So let's jump right in. F5 OS Multi-tenancy provides a similar experience to customers who are used to managing VCMP guests on their current i-series appliances. Instead of provisioning VCMP guests on top of a VCMP host layer, customers will now provision tenants on top of the F5 OS platform layer. Each TMOS tenant will run as a virtual machine via a technology called KubeWord which allows VMs to run on top of a containerized architecture. A quick note about high availability on the R series appliances. There is no redundancy between R series appliances at the F5 OS A layer. F5 recommends configuring dual R series appliances with identically configured tenants and maintaining HA relationships at the tenant level as you can see on the screen. This mimics the I-series HA behavior that is typically configured between VCMP guests. It is important to note that the appliances themselves are unaware of the other appliance and there is no HA communication at the F5 OS layer. To summarize, it is the tenants that form the HA relationship. R series allows different packaging options for tenant images. It is up to the administrators to choose the image that is best suited for their environment. The main differences between image types is how much space they can consume on disk and whether or not they allow in-place upgrades. It is important to note that tenant images are uploaded and stored at the F5 OS layer. These images are only used for initial deployment of a tenant. Subsequent upgrade of the tenant must occur from within inside of the tenant. Finally, the tenant must run an approved F5 OS tenant release. We'll talk about this in a bit here. What you're seeing on the screen is a snapshot from the R series configuration guide that is available to download. F5 has recommended use case dependent tenant image size, vCPU and memory recommendations in the configuration guide. There are four types of tenant images to choose from. They are T1, T2, ALL and T4. The T1 F5 OS image is a lightweight image that has limitations and is not generally recommended for most deployments. It is the smallest of image sizes, but it only has one slot or volume for TMOS software, meaning that it does not support upgrades. The T2 F5 OS image is intended for a tenant that will run LTM and or DNS only. It is not suitable for tenants needing other modules. This type of image is best suited in a high density tenant environment where the number of tenants per blade is high. 
F5 recommends limiting the amount of disk space assigned to each tenant to ensure that the file system on Blade has sufficient disk space to deploy all required tenants. The all F5 OS image is suitable for any module configuration. There may be certain use cases that require additional disk capacity such as storing a database and the T4 image is a good candidate for such deployment. Note that the image sizes in this chart are the maximum amount of space a tenant could use but does not represent what it will consume on the physical disk. After you've determined the big IP tenant image type that is best suited for your deployment, you'll want to ensure that you're running a version of big IP or TMOS software that is compatible with the version of F5 OS A that you're running. Link to this video is the F5 OS hardware software compatibility matrix that you're seeing on the screen. Once here, navigate to the R series section and select your R series model to determine the version of Big IP software to download. In my case, I'm running a R10900, so I'm going to click on the R10000 section. I'm also running a F5 OS A version of 131, which means that TMOS versions 1515 to 1518 are supported. For today's demo, I'm going to choose to run the 1518 TMOS version. You can download TMOS software at downloads.f5.com. Once here, click on find a download. You might recall that F5 OS A131 supports TMOS versions 15.1.5 through 15.1.8. So we're going to choose the 15x TMOS version. As you can see, um, the 15.1.8 version is selected. Ensure that you're choosing the 15.1.8 F5 OS tenant option. Also, once here, you'll, you'll notice that image types T1, T2, all and T4 are listed. I'm going to choose to run the all image type. So I'm going to choose the all F5 OS QCOW zip bundle. And select the US West Coast where I'm located. And the download has been initiated. The next step is to copy or upload the tenant to the R series appliance at the F5 OS layer. You can upload a tenant image via the web UI, CLI, or API. We're going to use the UI for this demo. In order to upload a tenant image, you'll need to navigate to the tenant image section under tenant management over here you can either choose to upload an image from your local computer or import an image from a remote https server as you can see i've initiated a an import of the uh, 1518 all tenant image from a local HTTPS server. Please note that once the image import has completed, it will also need to be verified and this process can take a while. As you can see, the 1518 all image that we imported has successfully been imported and verified and is listed under the tenant images. This image can now be used to deploy a TMOS tenant on our R series appliance. Now that our tenant image has been successfully uploaded, we are now ready to deploy a tenant. You can deploy a tenant using the CLI 
API or UI. Again, for today's demo, we are going to use the UI to deploy a tenant. Also, for today's demo, I've gone ahead and created two VLANs. In order to create a VLAN, navigate to the VLAN section under Network Settings. You'll notice that I have a LAN and WAN VLAN that are assigned to interfaces 1.0 and 2.0. In order to assign a VLAN to the interface, navigate to the Interfaces section, click on the interface that you want to associate a VLAN to and choose the VLAN you want to associate to this interface. Again, I have the uh, VLAN 50 assigned to interface 1.0 and VLAN 51 assigned to 2.0. In order to deploy a tenant, navigate to the Tenant Deployment section under Tenant Management. Click on Add. Provide a tenant name. Choose the tenant image. In this case, we are going to choose the 1518 All image that we uploaded. Enter an IP address. This is the management IP address for the TMOS tenant that will run on your R-Series appliance. In my case, I'm going to input an IP address of 10.144.140.61. going to use a prefix length of 24 and the gateway address of 10.144.140.254. We're also going to choose to associate both the LAN and WAN VLANs that we created to this tenant. I'm also going to choose recommended. Choosing recommended automatically adjusts the memory based on vCPUs allocated to the tenant. I'm going to choose 8 vCPUs in this case. Choosing advanced will allow you to over allocate memory and this is different from the i-series. The i-series did not provide this option. You can also choose from one of three states, configured, provisioned, and deployed. This is very similar to the VCMP state on an i-series appliance. I'm going to choose the deployed state. We're going to enable crypto acceleration and disable appliance mode and click save and close. As you can see, the tenant is, de is, is deployed and is starting up. As you can see, the tenant is deployed and is now running. This Big IP tenant can now be accessed and managed like a Big IP tenant running on any other platform via CLI, API and UI. Let's go ahead and open up this tenant via the management IP address. So we're going to open a new browser tab. We're going to, as you can see, it takes us to the big IP UI. We're going to use the default password of admin admin. Because it's the first time I'm being prompted to change the uh, password which I'm going to do so okay our password is changed and to log in to the big IP tenant using the new password logged in as you can see this big IP UI is no different from a big IP UI on any other platform. The system dashboard provides an overview of the R series system and the tenants that are running on the R series appliance. The top section of the dashboard includes sections such as the system summary section, which contains information such as the system storage, the host name, IP address, product name, and the software versions that the R-Series appliance is currently running. It also includes information about the 
number of vCPUs that are available and the number of CPUs that are in use. The network section shows the current state of the interfaces and also displays port mappings. The CPU section contains information about the CPU thread counts. And finally, the active alarms section shows the system alerts that have occurred recently. It includes information about the source of the alert, the severity of the alert, contains a brief description of what occurred and the timestamp during which the event occurred. Note that the system updates the alarms every few seconds. The lower section of the dashboard includes an overview of the tenants that are currently running on the R-series appliance. A really cool feature is the ability to click on the management IP of the tenant and uh, you're navigated to the TMOS UI of the tenant running on the R-series appliance. To summarize, in the first video, we introduced the R-Series appliance platforms and the F5 OS A software that runs on the R-Series platforms. We also used the R-Series appliance setup wizard to configure management IPv4 addresses, DNS, and NTP settings on our R-Series appliance. In the second video, we were able to license an R-Series appliance, configure network and system settings at the F5 OS layer, backup and export our configuration, and finally upgrade the version of F5 OS software to install the latest F5 OS A 1.3.1 version. In this video, we created VLANs, mapped them to interfaces, went over TMOS tenant types, sizing recommendations and finally deployed a big ip tenant on our r series appliance thank you for watching